Hello, everyone. My name is William Mucker. I'm a client executive with Camaplan, and I would like to thank you all for joining us for today's webinar, Tax Saving Strategies to Boost Your Bottom Line with Byron McBroom and Melanie Sigma. As a quick note, please be aware that Byron and Melanie will be answering questions at the end of the presentation. However, feel free to use the chat and or Q&A function on your screen to po pose your questions whenever they cross your mind. They will be saved and addressed once the presentation portion ends and the Q&A portion begins. Before we get started, we have a brief disclosure to go through. Everything presented in today's webinar is strictly for educational purposes. Camaplan is a neutral third-party administrator of IRAs. We are not attorneys, CPAs, or financial advisors. If it comes to a time where you need advice in any one of those fields, we highly recommend you consult with your team of professionals. We are more than happy to be a part of the dialogue with your team of professionals to make sure the investment process is quick and seamless. We do not sell any investments at Camoplan, nor do we endorse any products. We will never call you about the next best investment opportunity. We believe that you should always do your own due. You should always do your own due diligence before investing your money, whether it be your retirement funds or otherwise. Once you have found the investment that is right for you, we will help you open your account, fund that account, and facilitate the transaction into that investment. Here is my contact information if you or anyone that you know who you believe can benefit from the information, have any questions about what is discussed in the presentation today and how it applies to self-direction, please do not hesitate to contact me. I would be more than happy to help. And without further ado, I'll pass it over to you, Byron and Melanie. All right. Welcome. Okay, so I'll go ahead and share now. My dad, uh, just a warning to everybody, my dad is technologically impaired sometimes, so... <laughs> He's the one that has to share, so bear with us. <laughs> and it, it ain't easy being me. So. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good on my end. Awesome. All right, All right so we're going to share with you guys today some strategies that will hopefully be able to fund some more investments and open up some um, extra money for your guys' pocket. So um, my dad is a creative thinker. He's been doing taxes, I always say, longer than I've been alive. And so you guys have a wealth of knowledge in front of you today. We um, will be sharing some strategies here and hopefully they'll benefit you. So. Okay. All right, let's jump to it. So step number one, we're going to go through a seven step tax solution process that we found has benefited a lot of people that we've worked with. Um, some of them may be beneficial to you. Some of them may not. Um, and so we hope that you, everybody on here will be able to at least pull a few tips that will save them several thousands of dollars a year. Um, typically, it saves around $38,000 for every person that we talk to. And so, um, so yeah, I'm just going to jump through it, and then we'll walk through what that looks like in real-life scenarios for some of our clients. So step number one is to pick the right entity. Uh, typically, you know, certain people do LLCs, certain people do S-Corps, and so it just depends on what scenario you're using it for. So, Dad, I'll let you jump into that a little bit. A lot of times we speak with a lot of real estate investors, but normally if you're flipping properties, the best entity is to be an S corporation. And that's really due because of the self-employment tax. If you're buying and hold, it's best to use an LLC. If you have a normal business, it really depends upon how much you're making, how much liability is involved and all the other factors. So, uh, but normally, and if you're buying notes, then, then it doesn't matter. You can do those individually. All right. Step number two is to take advantage of the little known Augusta rule. So this is where you can rent your house, your business for 14 days tax free. A lot of our clients like to hold their corporate board meetings in their home. And so it makes it simple. It's just um, basically monthly monthly meetings and then an annual meeting and then a semi annual meeting can get you um, several thousands of dollars in deductions. So. And this one came actually from uh, the Augusta, Georgia, you know, the golf tournament in Augusta, Georgia. So a lot of the participants would rent their house out and they kind of opened it up to everybody around them. All right. Step number three is legal child labor. Get your kids on the payroll. So this is my daughter, Naomi, right here. Uh, so we did this is actually a literal post that I've done. And for anybody under 18, you can pay them 13,850 tax free. And so this is kind of what I do with her. And I, if you have an S corp, you want to pay them from your S corp to a sole proprietor, and that will help you avoid payroll taxes. If you're paying from an LLC, you can pay directly out of that or the sole proprietor. Um, this is a great way to get your kids working for you, earn some tax free money and pay less tax. So. Now we just read a court case last week we found 
where the IRS, when somebody paid exactly the standard uh, 13850, which is the standard deduction, the IRS disallowed it because the people didn't have records. You know, they said the people made 14 bucks an hour, but it was exactly the amount of standard deduction. So the IRS said that's not really believable. So it's really important to keep records on what your children do. And we'll go more into detail on how to do that and what type of job they should have. But basically, you have to look an auditor in the eye and not smile when you tell them what your child did for the payroll. So a four-year-old can't clean the office, okay? You can't, it has to be reasonable. A lot of times what we people have to do is, is hire their kids as a model because a model might make, uh, the model might make uh, 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 175, $125 an hour. So therefore you can have a lot less hours to do this, okay? All right, step number four is an ebb tide lowers all boats. So my dad actually does this with my grandma. And we like to think it's basically what tax brackets around you can you utilize for your benefit? And so my dad, for example, my grandma is 90 years old. She didn't really save for retirement. And so he was going to support her anyways. She's at the lowest tax bracket in California and he's at the highest. So he just opened up a separate company for her. She's the owner of it. She's a passive owner, so she doesn't have to work for the company. And so that company provides a service to his company. And so when he hires her, he pays her about $80,000 a year. And so that money is then taxed at her rate instead of his. And he just has her, since he supports her anyways, he has her keep a little bit and then gift back the difference. And so this can save a substantial amount. So dad, how much does that save you? About 40 grand or? Well, I put $84,000 into that corporation. She gets a K-1 for that. The tax for her was actually only $11,000, but because I have $84,000 less, I save $41,000 in tax. So there was a net savings of $30,000. Out of the corporation, I pay her extra tax. She had some extra Medicare expenses because her income went up, so I paid that. Then she gets her, the money that I give her anyway, and the rest of it, she gives back to me. And the beautiful thing about this is I, I get the privilege of helping my mom in her old age, but... Uh, the IRS pays for it, but I get all the credit. Okay. All right. Step number five is our kick the can tax plan. And so this is where we create a massive tax deferral. We'll go over more on this later, but this is a great one for um, anybody with a company that has payroll, marketing, big costs like that, and they need to really lower their tax bracket. And so we'll go over this more later so you guys can see. Um, right now, we're just drinking out of a fire hose a little bit. <laughs> um, I'm going to go over quickly, actually, deferred savings versus permanent savings. So permanent savings is what you get with all those other strategies, the step numbers one through four. That's money that you're going to take out of your tax bracket or your taxable income, and you're never going to have to pay tax on that again. Or deferred savings is money where we're going to push it down the line down the road, but basically we're going to utilize that extra cash flow for the time being to be able to grow. And so it's intended for um, purposeful investing, purposeful use. And so basically it's, um, you know, you have to use it with intention. You need to pay. We always say you have to kick up, pick up the can down the road. So you want to make sure that you're going to not lose that. And so it's intended for working capital for your business or investments. And you definitely want to keep it secure. Do not lose that bottom line. Now, uh, we had a question come up. says, do we have to document the work payment purposes to my mom, similar to paying your children? And the answer is no, because my mom just owns the company. She's a passive investor. She just owns the stock and she gets the dividends from the company. So I, but I'm the president of the company. I'm the secretary. I work in the company and do all the work. My mom's just the passive owner and she gets her profits from the company. So it's a lot less documentation. Got to get the mouse in the right spot here. All right. Step number six is the hangover pills. So this is a year cure to the pain and capital gains. This is on the sale of um, strategies for if you're selling a highly appreciated property or an asset. And so we'll go over this a little bit later as well. Step number seven is get your money for nothing and your dreams tax-free. We always like to say, utilize your tax savings and fund your future with it. Don't just uh, use it to buy nicer things now, but if you use that for your investments, it's amazing 
Uh, we've run lots of calculations for anybody we do a tax plan for. We take their savings and we plug it into a calculation for if they invested it. And it's really powerful to see the impact that it can have on their future, even if it's a few years and just a few thousand dollars. It's amazing what that can do for their retirement. All right, let's see them in action. This is uh, Jim here. We're going to use pretend names. If you're an office uh, junkie like me, then you'll appreciate the characters we picked. Um, but this is Jim. He is a California realtor. These are real life clients, but we just use different names. Um, but his corporation was netting about 250000 And he already was an S Corp. So he had that step correct. Um, he had a child who was attending Arizona State University and two other kids that were under 18. At the time, he was paying out-of-state tuition for his child at, at college. And so as you, if you know of anybody or if you've paid out-of-state tuition, you know that can be a pretty penny. Um, his home was worth a million dollars. And he was paying himself a wage of 120000 So let's see what we did with him. Dad, I'll let you break that down. Okay. <clears throat> so the college plan saved tax on $40,000. Uh, what the college plan was is that's similar to what the payment where we did that we talked about with me paying my mother we form a separate corporation it provides a service to your main business and then we pay that company forty thousand dollars forty thousand happens to be uh the tax twenty five hundred happens to be the tax on forty so the kid takes his own education credit so he has zero tax and then you get a forty thousand dollar tax deduction we use the Augusta rule where we rented their home to the corporation for board meetings. We documented all that, wrote the checks, and that saved in the tax on $14,000. Since his home was worth a million, we did it for $1,000 a day. We also put his two underage kids on the payroll. That saved the tax on $25,900. So, and then we reduced his salary from $120,000 to $60,000. That did two things. One, it saved the payroll taxes on $60,000, which is about $9,000 in payroll tax savings. Plus, there's a thing called qualified business income. When you make money as a taxpayer, as a business owner, the IRS says you only have to pay tax on 80% of that. If you make money as a W-2, even if it's from your own business, you have to pay tax on 100% of it. So by lowering his wage by $60,000, we got an extra qualified business income deduction of twelve thousand dollars, you know, which saved him a few thousand dollars. But so basically, we save tax on forty. We save tax on fourteen. The total savings of forty three thousand dollars per year. This is permanent savings that he doesn't even have to pay back, and and this doesn't even count since the child had their own income. They could show that they were financially independent. Therefore, they qualified for in-state tuition after a year instead of instead of uh, being in out-of-state tuition for the whole time. Also, a side benefit is that since this corporation is really a vendor for their business, when they fly back to see their child, it's now a tax-deductible trip because it's a trip back to talk to a vendor. When the vendor flies to the home to see you, it's a tax-deductible trip on that business because you're flying home to see one of your customers. So there's a lot of extra side benefits that can really work with this uh, to really show you how to save a lot of money. Okay, so what would 43,000 do for you? Uh, we actually have a, you can click on this little uh, QR code and we actually have driven up a software that you can self-assess how much money you're leaving on the table, okay? So just, you might wanna do a snip of that. It'll be in the recording. And and we'll post it about 157,000 times during this uh, webinar. So <laughs> you should have plenty I, of time to get a picture of it. I put the website also in the chat and it just kind of helps you see how much you can save. We've created this just because a lot of people when we've done speeches have always wondered how much can I save? So we've created a quick tool for that. All right. All right, this is Dwight. Mr. Dwight is a California contractor who made $5 million net and was going to owe $2 million in tax when he came to us. Um, he supported his in-laws, um, was not doing the parent plan. And he is sad because the IRS is taking a ton of his, lot, you know, of his hard-earned money. A lot of business owners and people that we talk to, they work so hard. They sacrifice sleep and time with family and loved ones. And then they have to give half of it away to the IRS. And so someone like him is not happy. So 
So strategies we employed with him, we did the parent plan, which is also called the ebb tide plan. So this is a portion of that. It saves tax on $75,000. The Augusta rule saved tax on 14,000. So that's a new rented his house to his business. And with him, we did the kick the can plan. So we were able to uh, defer tax on $4 million in the first year and $11 million more in later years. So we're going to go into what the heck the kick the can plan is in a second. But first, the parent plan, Augusta strategy, all those saves $35,000 in permanent savings per year. And then the deferred savings on that was 1.75 in one year and over $5 million in later years. So it's pretty incredible what that can do. All right, what the heck is this plan here? Dad, I'll let you talk about it. Okay, so the kick can plan is basically a massive deferral. If you think of it as a, just a monster IRA, and it's a traditional IRA, not a Roth IRA. So it, basically you get a deduction now, but the money's taxable later. So what you do is you have your main company, which normally has a December 31st year in. That's, and this represents here three years worth of the main company's business. We then form a marketing company or a payroll company, and that is an S-corporation also. Both of these are S-corporations. And that company we form with a, a November 30th year in, okay? And so what happens is all, all through the year, the marketing company pays the marketing expense or pays the payroll expense, and it invoices the main company, but your main company is a little slow payer, so it doesn't get around to paying the bills till the month of December every year. Since in the month of December, that payment is tax deductible by the main company, but since the marketing company only has a, a November 30th year in, any money it receives in December is actually not taxable till the next year. So by doing that, you create a massive deferral. The next year you do it over again, you do it over again, you just keep doing this until you either sell your business or you decide that you wanna pay the IRS back. So it's really a, a it's paying your taxes with intention. You can get a massive tax deduction for this. So what did he do with the money here? So he was able to take that money and he invested it into real estate starting in 2010. So you guys can imagine what that did to his portfolio and how much that has grown over the course of the last um, decade or so, a couple decades, actually. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. And he also purchased a life policy. So my dad said you stop it when you sell the business or when you want to stop it. It also stops if the, the owner of the company dies. And so we always say, make sure you have a life policy, whatever kind, um, to basically equal the amount of the deferral. So you don't have to leave your family with this big burden. And my dad says, unless you want to, but I don't know most people that would want to do that. So you always get a life policy. So if you kick the can uh, before, you know, we say kick the can until you kick the bucket or you can stop doing it at the time of your choosing. All righty, hangover pills. So here's your cure to the pain of capital gains. So this is for highly appreciated assets, you know, businesses, stocks, crypto, et cetera. And this is for anything over 200 to $250,000 in capital gains if you're looking at paying that. We have a few options here. Before the listing, we have the charitable LLC or a charitable remainder trust. After the listing, but before the sales, deferred escrow trust. And then after the sale, before the end of the year. So it has to be within the time of the sale of the asset that we have a charitable lead trust. And we're going to go over these, what they look like in our clients' lives, but they're extremely complicated. And so we kind of just want to make you aware of it. And then you can come talk to us and we'll look at it for your particular situation if it makes sense. Um, but this is also really great if you want to sell a property or if you want to buy a property and a person doesn't want to sell because they don't want to pay capital gains. So this is a really great tool for your tool belt to be able to just have more options. All right. So we had a client who's selling their business for about $6 million. Um, he came to us. And so the tax on that would have been $2.2 .2 million. Keep in mind, we're in California, so we pay the maximum tax. So, <laughs> By utilizing a charitable LLC, we were able to get that down to $128,000. So we went from $2.2 million to $128,000, which saved him $2 million. Okay. And so like I said, this is a great option for if you, um, you know, if you're trying to buy properties from somebody, it gets you away from that here too. It just gives another... Um, edge that you can use to set you aside from other people. 
All right, this is somebody in Florida. So we uh, we're in California, but we have clients all over the United States. So some of our clients are California based, some are um, other states. This guy was from Florida and he was selling his laundromat for 1.5 million, which would have equaled about $345,000 in tax. So for him, we did the deferred escrow trust and we were able to get that down to $30,000. And now this is deferred savings. So it's a little different, but $315,000 we were able to defer. That gives him $315,000 over the course of 30 years to be able to utilize that money and grow it. So imagine what you could do with that. All right, the, yeah, I'll let you touch the, on this point. Yeah, the way the deferred escrow trust works is you basically, when you're gonna sell a piece of property, or a business or whatever, you form a trust, has to have an independent trustee. And then what you do is you uh, you sell it to that trust on the installment sale, let's say over 30 years, interest only, balloon in 30. Well, you won't really only pay the capital gains when the, in, when the trust pays you principal payments on your loans, which might be in a down year. It might be when you know, you'll plot it out, but basically the trust then sells the property for cash. That money sits in the trust and you can invest it from the trust which can include loaning the money back to you to finance other purchases. And the beautiful thing is you, you have that IRS money that you would have spent. Now you have it for additional financing for your projects. And then you still owe the money, but I did an analysis when you had 7% inflation over 30 years and that $300,000 obligation turned into about $30,000 in the time equivalent value of money because your, your tax liability is not inflation adjusted but you make profit on that money the whole time. So it really is a great deal for you to determine when you wanna pay the capital gains tax. All right, in closing, some of these strategies are extremely um, complicated. So <laughs> this is my dad, uh, this wasn't even during COVID. So he doesn't have that, that as an excuse, <laughs> but he came into the office and his head looked like this. And so I'm like, dad, did you cut your hair? And he said, yeah, why? And he. <laughs> He's like, I was in a hurry. I had to leave for a speech. And so I just kind of went at it. And uh, anyways, he thought he did a good job until we showed him this picture. And so he was able to quickly run to his barber and get it touched up before he had to fly out. But the, the idea behind it is don't do this yourself, kids. This is extremely complicated stuff. And you do not want your taxes to look like my dad's haircut. <laughs> I said it ain't easy being me. <laughs> Dad, if you uh, stop sharing, then reshare. Uh, we updated this. This is uh, an okay. old PowerPoint that we kind of used with one of our tax partners. And so we are one-stop tax strategists. So you might've seen measured results. It's one of our That's tax partners. Um, but the the QR code that we're gonna share. Actually, you know what I'll do is I'll just put it in the, I'll put it in the chat, you guys. If you wanna touch base with us, see if you can save anything. We are happy to offer a free tax assessment. I'll put my uh, my sister's email in here. At this time, I'll let you guys ask any questions though. All right, perfect. Thank you for the great presentation. Um, I'll keep an eye out for the questions as they come in and I'll, I'll pose them to you. Um, but to get started, I mean, obviously we're an IRA custodian, so all my questions are gonna be IRA related. Going mm -hmm. back to the, the point you made about um, adding your children to the payroll. One of the strategies I've seen people use um, is getting their children started with Roth IRAs early, and they use that strategy. They added their 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 ch children to their payroll. They paid them for modeling fees, wrapped their cars with photos of their children, and then had that money put into a Roth IRA. Can you comment on that? On that strategy? What your opinion of is of it is, and and anything along the lines of that. You're going to go mail or me? You can. Okay. I'm going to put the so website. We think that that's a phenomenal strategy. Uh, what you can do is you can pay them the 12, the 13850 and then fund a Roth IRA, or you can pay them $6,000 more and fund a traditional IRA. So it really depends on if, you know, if you want to do Roth or traditional, but uh, they can do the self-managing of either IRA and it grows tax, you know, it grows tax free, obviously. With a traditional, you'd pay tax when you pull it out. But this is a great way to, you know, pay them the 13, 14, plug in the money that you can do for the IRAs, and then the rest of it you can use for their, you know, expenses. You all the money you spend the kids on, you at least spend that much money. <clears throat> so we think that's a phenomenal strategy. 
and then you can go self-directed. So, I mean, I have some, I have a client that flips a lot of properties. He's actually a wholesaler. And what he does <clears throat> is he ties up a property with his Roth IRA. He has his, he has his wife, he has two children's and he, he wholesales property and he makes about 25,000 per property. So he basically can do five properties per year with the Roth IRA without it being called a dealer. And so he puts basically $125,000 per person tax-free into Roth IRAs. So he has him, like I said, him, himself, his wife, and his kids. So that's 20 deals a year he can fund through his Roth IRAs. He never takes title of the property. He just has the right to tie it up, and then he sells that right. So that's a really good way to put a tremendous amount of money through your Roth IRAs. And, uh, you know, the folks at Cama can really help you with that. Absolutely. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, we're, I'm personally very partial to the Roth, especially for, you know, people like my nieces and my nephews, I, I they all have Roths. Um, and the benefits of that is you don't get, you get the tax hit up front, but years down the line, you know, they're locked in until a certain age, but there's all, also the qualified distributions for, you know, higher education or first time mm -hmm. home purchases that are just, mm -hmm. you know, great for younger people when they're, when they're getting older. So definitely partial to that. Um, I know people are asking in the Q and A in the chat for the, the QR code, but it does look like Melanie put the link, which uh, the QR code directs you to in the chat. So that's www.taxsavingsestimator.com um, for anybody watching the recording later. Um, any other questions for Melody or Byron while we have them on the call today? Um, do, while while people's um, questions are getting jogged up in their mind, any opinion on you know SEP IRA, simple IRA versus four hundred one k, and how people can can utilize those with the with some of the strategies that you mentioned? Dad, I'll let you take that one away. I think <laughs> so. Any strategies for these other items with their IRAs? For for employer employer linked plants more so. I know you you had different strategies for S corps, mm -hmm. um, and the kick the can method. Um, most of our strategies are going to be used for people that own a business. This the sad truth is that you know the IRS has made it so there's just not much a W two person can do. It's like they're driving by with a machine gun and you can't even duck behind a rock or anything <laughs> like that. Um, so the, that's why the IRAs are one of the few things that you can do. Uh, but there's just not that many strategies. I mean, I, I apologize. And it's kind of depressing when you help somebody comes to you with a very large W-2 and you want to give them, you know, they want some tax tips because they're desperate. And it's just really difficult to uh, come up with items other than the, the basic fundamentals and, the sad thing about IRAs is they're not that large. Now, I have an I have a like a 401k that a lot of my employees can self-direct. Get rid of that. I apologize. Um, and my employees can do self-directed with their uh, their 401k plan. So that might be something you might want to talk to your employer about. And and you know you might have some information on that if they can do it with their own. Uh, self-direct their own 401k plan at work to be self-directed because on mine I first had it where I was investing it and then I said you know I don't really want to be responsible for people's money so I went with an administrator that would let everybody have their own pot and I know I do self-directed out of that so I'm pretty sure the team members can do self-directed out of that too so but that would be a really good way to uh, uh, you know have your own 401k if you're not a business owner and have it self-directed so you can make a little bit higher rate of return. Absolutely. Thank you for that. It looks like, it looks like people might be going to your links or, or you've got their attention already. Not too many questions are coming in other than the, the links you've posted so far. If anybody does have questions for you or, or Melanie, how can they reach, reach you? So I put my sister's, uh, they can either go to the website or I put my sister's email. I can add ours in there as well. Um, my sister's probably the most quick to respond. So that's why I put her in there. Her name's Tiffany. And yeah. She's and a responsible they, one in the family. 
Yeah, we just like to have fun and share share the fun with people. <laughs> and then mine's the same. It's Melanie at one stop. So perfect. And my Thank dad you. just uh, he's he's our mentor, our guide, and so he he golfs and he says he likes to change light bulbs and come up with ideas. So that's <laughs> what he does. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he makes sure all of our tax partners are are fit and helpful for our clients and ready to you know be updated with the tax strategies. But other than that, he has fun. So um, we also, if you feel like the kids payroll or the Augusta strategy um, would work well for you, then you can always reach out to us and we have white papers on how to do that. That's a good value add. If anybody wants to look at more details on how to implement that, we're happy to help with that. Um, we also have a little booklet that we wrote uh, and it's talking about how all, all the pitfalls and the, the different dangers that we see that a lot of investors and entrepreneurs are exposed to. And so we can send that out as well. If you guys, um, you know, shoot us an email, we're happy to get that to you. Perfect. Thank you. And before we leave it off, you know, if for people that are watching the recording later, if you get one question more often than any others that you think people should be asking, what would that question be? And what would you say? in response it's it's a tough question i ask a lot of people catch mm -hmm. catch them off guard because there's so many good questions but if you can i think the biggest thing is like what do what do you look for when you're looking for a tax professional um a lot of people don't really it's the tax world is like a different language and so you kind of need somebody to be able to translate for you and so you want to make sure that the person translating for you is going to be translating correctly right and that they have your back and so i think making sure um, you find somebody that is running your numbers at the end of every year so that you know exactly what you're going to owe before the end of the year hits and somebody that's proactive. They're looking for the questions to ask you or, you know, to save money rather than just asking questions to fill out the form. I'd say those are the really the main thing. All the other stuff changes with the tax code. And so you just want to make sure that you have somebody that has your back. Mm -hmm. In our little book, which we can send to you. I got the QR code too. <laughs> We love our QR code. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, the, we talk about the big dangers and the first danger is the danger of bad advice. You know, mm -hmm. I see, I would say that almost one third of every return I pick up, I can amend and take extra deductions or the guys taking deductions that are totally wrong. Uh, we had a, a person call the other day that the, the tax preparer uh, basically formed a management company and and said his house was a rental the guy put fictitious rents on there took depreciation on the house that he was just living in and just made up a rental property on that and got him a eight thousand dollar refund but the guy just fabricated things and you really don't want to have to deal with something like that we always say we want to pay as little tax as legally possible and stay out of trouble with a big emphasis on stay out of trouble we want to pay less taxes but we want to do it right and document it right the other thing that I get asked a lot too is the almost the number one thing you can do to pay less taxes is have a good bookkeeping system. Uh, yeah. One thing we recommend for people, especially that are just getting started or people that are small time investors is have a separate bank account for all your business type items and investment items, and then have a dedicated credit card. So really then it just takes when you're gonna buy something, you pay for that account or you, or you charge it with a certain credit card and it goes into your system therefore you get every deduction possible where people pay business stuff out of personal accounts and personal stuff out of business accounts it really makes it a mess so have those dedicated business accounts and then also uh, one of the things you might want to do and if you can put your uh, if you can email tiffany we'll put you on our newsletter but we have uh, we we pass out tax tips every week sometimes two or three times a week and give tax tips to people and and just read you know you are what you are, except for the people you meet and the books you read. So make it a habit of reading newsletters and tax tips. And it's particularly if you're self-employed, you can, you know, really a little tip can save you lots of money. Okay. We got one request for that. That would be good. Uh, the, How did they uh, rewatch this? Um, Mary is asking here. Yeah, I was just, I was just about to, I just saw that. So 
this recording will be sent out to all registrants. Anybody who registered for the for the webinar will get a recording of this email to them, usually before the end of the day. At the very latest, you should get it tomorrow. This will also be posted on the What Camo Plan website, as well as posted on social media as well for you guys to watch. Perfect. And we're, we're also uh, in the process. In August, we fly out to Ohio, and we're recording a tax essentials course. This is going to be a series of videos on on how to pay as little tax as possible. It's going to be how to do a bookkeeping system, how to write off your car, how to write off meals, how to write off travel, how to pay your kids, how to it's you know, everything we see people ask and we put in we make a little video on and then there'll be attachments like there might be a PDF attachment or a Google sheet or something like that. But if you're interested in that, put your uh, you know make sure and send Tiffany a we don't want to send it out or sell it yet, you know. Uh, there'll be a free version and a paid version. Obviously, the paid will have some extra goodies in it. Mm -hmm. But the we, would, we really want to, if you're interested in that, just post your name and we'll put you on our list. So when it does come out, we'll we'll send you an invite for that. And that would be a, uh, it, it'll just be a, a every, it's kind of like an FAQ for taxpayers. You know, how do you get those, how do you write off the cars, the meals, the travel? And then extra tips, like for instance, uh, for people that write off a car, you're let's say you buy a two hundred thousand dollar Mercedes, and you're going to be limited to, you know, you know twelve thousand dollars a year. We basically, or you're you only use it fifty percent business. We have little tricks in there. We teach you how to make it a hundred percent business use and survive IRS audit on that. So uh, that's going to be a real. There's a lot of little tricks like that that'll easily save you thousands of dollars too. And what, what I tend to do is as I see somebody do something clever, like for instance, one uh, time I had an IRS audit and the auditor told me, you know, they had a bunch of, they had a bunch of travel expenses to go to Hawaii and the people had done a good job. They had written up a, a, an agenda and a minutes for the whole meeting. And the, and the guy had taken him and his wife. Well, he had to allocate out part of that because his wife's share wasn't tax deductible. Well, what the IRS auditor told me was to uh, pay your wife a small salary, say $400 a month as a consultant. And now when you're going to Hawaii and you're taking your spouse, it's tax deductible because you're taking an employee. You're not taking the spouse. That's one of the beautiful things about having your kids on the payroll is now when you go to Hawaii, you can do those photo shoots over in Hawaii or the Bahamas mm -hmm. and add a business deduction. Yeah, one of the things we talked about on the kids' payroll is uh, you know you got to be able to look the otter in the eye and 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 not laugh when you tell them what they're doing. <clears throat> a lot of you in your businesses use Facebook posts and Instagram posts to promote your business. Well, one we want to take pictures of the kids and use that because that way you can show that you actually did that, and it's a good that just posting those pictures is really a good logbook for you to justify if you pulled up your Facebook and showed the IRS the countless pictures of your kids in your business post, it's really going to be a long documentation for deducting, for, you know, documenting that deduction. So obviously the goal is to make as much of your lifestyle as deductible as possible. And like I said, we can help you guide you through that. Amazing information. Thank you. Um, so I think we have uh, enough information for people to digest. Um he gets you, excited you gave, about it. <laughs> <laughs> you um you gave people information on how how you can be reached. If you want to close out on anything, let let the people watching now and in the recording know anything before we close it off. You know, now's the time. You know, one of the the key things is is it's it's what we really want you to do is take this extra tax savings and invest it. A lot of times I save people twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year, and then they just buy nicer tennis shoes. Because really, if you can take this extra tax savings and over a twenty-year period, a thirty-year period, fund your retirement plans either through self-directed IRAs or through other plans, it the time value of money and plus earning the interest on that money is just so powerful, and it you can really fund your whole retirement system with tax savings. And that's when it gets exceptionally powerful. It gets very rewarding for us too. Amazing. Thank you. Um, so I want to first thank everybody who came and, and watched, everybody who's watching this recording after the fact for, for lending 
the time to us to, to listen. And I want to thank you, Byron. I want to thank you, Melanie, as well for lending your time, providing some knowledge to us all. Um, and I hope you and everybody takes this and, and uses it, reaches out to Byron and Melanie and Tiffany with any questions they may have and cam a plan for any questions they may have about self-directed IRAs. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Thanks for having us.